flag flies, and there's the explosion, and what a run by the number 16 of Jan Halen. Yeah. He's done. Yep. That's going to hurt. That's going to be a great wingman for Pat Long because Halen slid in inside of Dane Cameron, and that's going to protect Pat Long, the sister car from Wright Motorsports. Again, Halen coming from a lap down with that 90-second hole for the Pro-Am cars. They're going to go down an extra lap for all of the Pro-Pro entries, typically around this short racetrack. Yep. It was interesting in the touring car race that Dane ran earlier. He took advantage of a great opportunity on a restart and uh, played it beautifully. But this time, I'll tell you that Jan Halen read that absolutely beautifully. Yeah, he's fired up. He's always <laughs> ready to go. Yeah, that's true. You know, he's got that thumb underneath his chin and uh, full attack mode. Mark Lee, reigning world champion in LMP1. And Le Mans winner. About turn key, he just slid in there like it's a Pat Long or York Bookmaster behind the wheel. <laughs> exactly. Not a misstep and into the rhythm of the race immediately. Yeah, those Porsche factory drivers. You just <laughs> pop them into a Porsche and it's just like, <laughs> yep, we're there. There is Dane. Then you're, I believe, I just want to confirm this here. The, uh, tell you what, Jan Halen. He sure is. Yeah, he was able to uh, get around Ricardo Sanchez in the summer, the 75 car. And I don't know whether they were able to do that in the pit stop itself, but, uh, yeah, that car's leading right now in Pro-Am. Still a lap down at the overall lead of Pat Long, which uh, is not what his goal is. He doesn't really care right. about that. He's getting the class victory, certainly. All right, now, at what stage here, as we look back through the field, and my eyes particularly in 14th overall really? right now, and sure old bleak Mullen, <laughs> at what point do we see that number 54, Black Swan Mercedes, create a little bit of a gap? Because That's inevitably, the, the last two laps of the race, something purple generally appears with, with him as he goes fastest and pops right to the top. He certainly does. Uh, but the key is with the traffic that he's in, Greg, he's got great enough, enough space to be able to lay down his fast lap time versus yes. the guy immediately in front of him. Well, I'll tell you, for Ryan Dial right now, he's got a GT Cup, that black Ferrari leading this queue, then an Am Am car in the Aston Martin. And look at this, just around the outside, Halliday swamps him, and beautiful read by Parent, and here comes... Jordan Taylor up the inside, and suddenly Ryan Dial just lost three spots. Yeah. Yeah, that's the how just traffic can work against you here and the momentum. It's all about momentum and just Ryan just didn't get through that chicane. It just really doesn't seem like the setup is right for that part of the racetrack. Yeah. So Morad struggle early in the race and Ryan to a certain degree as well. Precious positions he's losing under pressure now from Tom Dyer. And there Danny Close just opens the door up, but at a certain point he's got to turn. He can't just run off close. the track. So that was yeah, indeed it was, and it really bottled up Jordan Taylor right now. About baptism of fire for Danny Close in terms of learning this racetrack and now learning how to race as uh, one of the slower cars out there. Exactly. It's like, it's like you scream for mummy at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know what to do. Ooh, look at the back of the 31 Ferrari. Did you see the rear wing on the back of the Nicolas Quiros TR3 racing car? has been a front runner here. Big damage to the rear wing on that car. It's back in this queue a little bit. Pretty wild there through West Bend. This is really showcases what Lime Rock can be all about in terms of the traffic stack. So obviously just some awfully close quarters racing. Let's see if we can pick that up as it comes through here. Oh, this damage to the front of that car too. So he's My looks goodness, like he's been in a sandwich here. Yeah, he's, he needs to get in because he's going to go for a ride yeah. here. He's probably getting a little bit of downfall still from the right side of that rear wing, but. That disappears on them. They're going to be running out of body parts here pretty quick. There's a lot of new carbon bits on that car. Ferrari's had a couple of tough weekends Ooh, with uh, Alex Ribeiro having the big crash up at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. Couldn't see any action that weekend. Couldn't get the car fixed for this one. So they're effectively at the Sprint X Championship in terms of the position. We'll see when they rebound and come back. Boy, look at this. Is it's Dial just now able to get through on the 007. Uh, Aston Martin, and uh, let's check down on pit lane for what could be a uh, sketchy development, Joe. Yeah, starting to get some raindrops down here, guys. There's definite water in the air. I don't think, uh, unless it starts to downpour, we'll be affected right now, but there is definite rain in the air. Well, the good news is you've got full field of cars out there, Jeff, and also they've got good tire temperature from those Pirelli P0s, so 
there's a lot of misting this morning and when the cars weren't running the racetrack got down pretty quickly but with cars running out there online greg unless as jeff said it really gets heavy we should be okay in terms of keep pushing hard there without any real problems for the drivers but you gotta be on your toes yeah well these probably p0s when they're heated like that there's not it's just that real light moisture on the track it'll help evaporate it off pretty quickly but offline you can find some moments here see those two accuracy up at the top 10. Tire, the 43 mark wilkins there in the 93. Not the top 10 result at canadian time i think they finished eighth yes up there so uh starting to see the form we expect in that group and the number three boy i'll tell you that uh cadillac racing crew they get it done and uh you know, this might be an exercise in uh, going just trying to get a good lap in I mean, Ricky doing a nice job, and he's just not trying to get in front of the cars that might be racing. Right here on the rebound. Boy, what an opportunistic move when yeah. he all got bottled up. And that's what they needed after what happened to them up at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park to put themselves right in a potential podium scenario here. Well, when they finish, they're, <laughs> they're finishing yeah. well. The problem is they've that's had a couple true. of DNFs. Yeah, that's the issue. Really so. hurting them. Those zero points go as deep as this field is, and you get classified on all of the GT cars, Greg. So yep. it's not just the Pro Pro. It's based on all of the GT cars out there. With a stack deck like we're seeing in these sprint next rounds, it really hurts you. You can see a little bit of moisture on the lenses now. Some of the cameras around the track as we are now four minutes. Four minutes remaining here in round five of the Pro World Challenge Sprint X Championships at Lime Rock Park. Lead at the front is just over five seconds. Mark Lee continues to lead from Dane Cameron. Cameron's been a little bit quicker on these last couple of laps, but that could just be Mark Lee controlling things at this stage of the game. Recognizing there's just under four minutes to go. No need to take any risk. And right now, the 58 car is the fastest lap of the day set by Pat Long in the opening stint just one hundredth, well, basically four thousandths of a quicker, quicker than Spencer Pompelli, <laughs> but they'll start from the front row tomorrow with the 58 machine on pole as we speak. Let's look see what Bleaker Molin's done. Now he's got down the 52.6, but nothing down in the low 52 range. We've got a number of people in the 52.6s. Uh, Skiro is a 52.5. That's good. And that car's in the pits, so yeah, they're going to at least potentially have a decent starting spot here. 52.7 for the number three Cadillac. Look at this. This is getting interesting. Look at the other. That's the 16, the 16 car. Yes, yeah, so it's the sister car that Dane's getting closer to again. Yeah, margin what about? Long's down the road, they're going into turn one. About five and a half seconds right now for the 58 in hand. Leave, leave further down the road. That last lap, second and a half. Cameron uh, closed the lead down at 4.3, but time is running out, and I'm sure Mark Lee is just taking care of traffic to not make any mistakes and, and get taken out. Looks to me like we've got a gap here between the Acura and the Black Swan Mercedes. Let's see what he can come up with. Let's see if he's throwing one down this lap. I guess part of it will depend on one, the condition of the tires, and two, the condition of the track. But it sure doesn't look like we've lost the track in any way, shape, or form here with this just a slight bit of moisture. Yep. So we'll see what he can do. He'll be digging. He's the magician. <laughs> He'll be up in the top ten. Top eight, maybe. Yep. Maybe better. But you know, Jerome would love to be on that front row to start tomorrow. Finishing driver today starts the second race of the weekend. In the Pro-Am category, you have to qualify your Am driver. And then he starts race one, turns over the pro. Pro can then try and lay down a fast lap and get a good grid slot to start the race for tomorrow. And we'll get a fresh set of Pirelli P zeros as well. Here we go. 52.69 was his best lap previously. Not there. 53.8. What's going to happen for yeah. Jerome today? He said it depends how much they've had to take out of their tires to get to this stage of the That's race. Right. And this is a racetrack, Greg, that you do get high tire dig with. You know, you're just really loading that left side all of the time. So yeah. unlike a normal circuit where you're sharing the load, so to speak, yes. between the left and the right side, it's going to be hard to lay down a fast lap at the end of a run here. So no surprise that the uh, opening stint drivers did 
you know, quicker lap times than some of the times we've seen here in the second stages. Into our final minute, the number 58. We're getting the report, white flag next time by when Mark Lee brings the Wright Motorsport Porsche Consulting number 58 Porsche. Underneath the start stand next time by, there's a look at the number nine running in third right now overall. Great Alvaro result. Brent. Great yeah, result for truly. those guys who really needed to uh, get some points. It's not going to help them in terms of chasing down Pat Long in the overall championship for Alvaro Perrin, but podium run is nice. Dane Cameron second in the Magnus car. Here we go. Down through the diving turn. White flag awaits Mark Lieb as we start our final lap here in round five of the Pirelli World Challenge Sprint X Championships. And boy, there is a look at John Wright himself, the brain trust, the team manager, pretty much Wright Motorsport himself right there. And boy, he gets it right an awful right, lot. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> It's impressive. He's on top of it. Yeah. He, he's really looking at every aspect of the game, and uh, they're executing, and great driver lineups, and great support from Porsche, and the car's working well. As we said before, Greg, it seems to be strong at all of the circuits this year. It really does. And uh, to a point at, uh, at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, he said, you know, we missed it a little bit because we may want it to stay out a little bit mm -hmm. as well. Certainly the uh, number eight Cadillac proved it right. Well, one thing he does, he doesn't make the same mistake twice. They played <laughs> the strategy to perfection. Yeah. Down the hill comes your reigning world champion, having taken over from one of the best in the business in Pat Long. And number 58, Wright Motorsports, earns another win in the Pirelli World Challenge. Porsche wins at Lime Rock Park. And there is a very, very happy crew. A little bit frustrated after Canadian Tire Motorsport Park and uh, – the Champagne and Victor Circle will wash that away nice and clean. Well, they've shown in the past, Greg, they know how to rebound and yes. regroup and uh, dig deeper and come back out strong. They did it superbly well this weekend. This is a tough weekend. Yep. Uh, another, you see the uh, Bren there finish off that podium run, so he finishes in the third position. Second podium out of four Sprint X rounds for he and uh, Ben Barnico. You'd say, well, that's got to be great for the points. Well, the problem is they didn't finish the other two so far. Yeah, it's podium or bust. Yes. That's the way it's been, and generally not be of their own doing, which is doubly frustrating. Can't say enough about Magnus Racing. 